Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here back with another 45 Drives Tuesday Tech Tip. And today we're gonna to chat a little bit about our open source philosophy and what that means to you. So first, let's talk a little bit about what open source is. Open source is a term that originated in the context of software development to designate a specific approach to creating programs. This means code for programs designed to be publicly accessible, anyone can view it, anyone can modify it, and distribute it as they see fit. What it contributed to was a more collaborative way to work on projects that solve problems for a community at large. And that's where the coined phrase open source community comes from. What was once an idea or a practice for a particular project turned into a movement and a new way of working that reaches beyond the traditional ways of software production and uses collaboration to find new ways to solve problems for a larger subset of industries and communities. Now, with that being said, how long has open source been around? Well, really, since the existence of the internet itself. Back in the 1950s, researchers developing early internet technologies used methods such as peer reviews and user groups to collaborate and build upon a single author's source code. And now, since the internet was born back in the 90s, the values of collaboration, peer reviews, communication, and openness are still etched into its foundation. Then comes along Linux, an operating system developed as an alternative, free, and open source version of what was available at that time. Well, technically that's a little oversimplified, but it will do for the scope of this video. I do suggest you check out this Reddit post if you want more details. So in a nutshell, because Linux is released under an open source license, which prevents restrictions on the use of the software, anyone can view, run, modify, and redistribute the source code as they see fit. And since its inception, tons of open source distributions were developed and widely utilized based off the original Linux released in August of 1991. Now this is where 45 Drives comes into the picture. You can check out a video that Brett did a while back on our company history, but basically we started out as a custom solution provider of storage hardware. This hardware needs software to run. Over the past number of years, we've offered an alternative way of storing large amounts of data. We build our storage systems with open source software and commodity hardware with an enterprise support structure that gives you the utmost confidence in your purchase. Now, we are a leading provider of open source storage solutions as a whole. Now I know what you think, open source just sounds scary. The alternative sounds like a risk. Well, why don't you think of it this way? Would you rather have one team of developers or one single author working on something that you have no control over or an entire community of individuals, much like yourselves, trying to solve a problem, all contributing to make the software and ultimately your solution as good as it can be? I'm pretty sure I'd pick the latter. For example, we developed an easy to use storage management platform off of an already existing community project called the Cockpit Project. We were able to develop Houston, which gives administrators a much easier way to manage your storage infrastructure that doesn't shy away from the command line for expert users, but also has a beautiful and easy to use UI for those who would rather click and type to get the job done. Now we won't get into Houston today as we have a plethora of YouTube videos that explain how to utilize certain features in the platform. Another potential scary point of open source software is who can you rely on to help support or fix any problems that you run into? Well, that's why we have a support team to take that fear away for you. They're kind of like the Ghostbusters of storage, except instead of the ghosts and that enormous puff guy, they're sucking the fear out of the administration of your storage products. Also, if you're more the reading or watching type, we have lots of documentation and videos available that give you the ability to get to the same end goal by following along to step-by-step -step tutorials. Plus, we also provide PDF guides and questionnaires to help you get started off on the right foot and public and private webinars that you can attend, ask questions to help understand certain aspects of storage. Now I mentioned earlier about commodity hardware. This is what we call open platform. The idea of this gives you two main advantages. If something breaks, you can easily source a new one. Also, the cost of these parts will be less than they would be replacing them through vendors with proprietary hardware. Lastly, the magic of a storage system is that everything is performed on a software level, software defined storage which provides much more flexibility and a longer lifespan than proprietary parts. Okay, now I realize that we just went over what open source means to us and how we as a company have adopted the philosophy from the very beginning. The storage landscape is always changing and we need to be aware of this and change with it. But with that being said, because we exist as an open source storage provider, you no longer are forced to buy bloated expensive systems where you get locked into contracts using proprietary software and hardware. And if you're still not convinced, 
try talking to the open source community. It's a warm and welcoming world of developers who are all trying to make the storage world a better place, one less restrictive contract at a time. So now before we end this video, speaking of members of the open source community, uh, it would be absolutely criminal for me to do this video and not invite Brett Kelly up here. He just walked in the room. Uh, he's already got a mic on. Because I walk around the office with a mic on. Absolutely. Just ready to go. You never know what video you're going to crash. And uh, we want to get a little bit of information out of you. So what's going on? You know what? Um, I'm doing well. What's going on with you, though? This is your video. Yeah. Um, what's the news? What's the story? We're shooting a video. We're talking about open source, uh, uh, about yes. our open source philosophy. So. I have opinions on that. I, I figured you do, so I figured let's invite you up here and, and ask you kind of, you know, what, what does open source mean to you? Oh, okay, well, that's a good question. Mean to me? Well, personally, I've got love for it because my, I've learned a lot and I've adventured into things I never thought I'd adventure into because of the open source community and the SI, this concept that you can just dive out in the world and read things, ask for help, and, and just, I don't know, learn things. Mm -hmm. For yeah. not much money. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, the, but the idea is, like, it's just there's, there's knowledge out there to be shared. So personally, I owe, well, my current career to it. But um, I'm sure, like, as a whole, like, what does it mean to 45 Drives? What does it mean to the world? What does it mean to people? Well, just long and short of it is the current state of technology, um, IT, the Internet, wouldn't exist without open source as we know it. This idea of sharing key ideas and in infrastructure and code to build bigger and better things without open source and this idea of sharing not only work and, and, and source code, but like knowledge and, and ideas and, um, and all those great things. That's what's built the world as we know it, this, this ever-connected, interneted um, world. Anyway, that's what, so I guess what I'm saying is without open source. No. We don't get to do all these awesome things we do here. But where does that fit in with the business, right? Like, because everyone hears open source and they think kind of black and white about it, where it's just like, if you're open source, you hate closed source proprietary things or vice versa. That's not true at all. Like, both have a, a place in this world. Um, where, where open source really comes in and where it complements it is like, the closed source, the, the real, the, the, those pieces of software, those pieces of solution, those solutions people build um, are real value add stuff. People went in and they figured something out. They, they, they solve a unique problem in the market. They give something, someone that um, they wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be paid. You're taking ideas and you're pushing it forward. Um, but every good software solution or, or anything these days, networked, internet solution is, you're going to need databases, you're going to need storage, you're going to need networking, you're going to need all this infrastructure to make your unique idea work. So why would you want to go and spend all your money and, and, and investments and capital on buying infrastructure and then you got nothing left for the people to build your ideas or the, the I don't know, all the unique things that make your product or your service unique? Um, so there's two things that happen there. Either you go spend all your money on infrastructure and your product sucks, or you spend all your money on investing in people and ideas to build your wonderful idea, but then your product sucks because your infrastructure sucks. Mm -hmm. So this is where the two really marriage well. Like, I'm not saying closed source should go away. You're never going to get the perfect uh, ERP system or media asset management for free because, well, it's it's it's. There's, there's magic and value put into that. But all those pieces need a core fundamental database. Um, storage, Ceph, whatever. I've used the same examples again, and I want to get back on point. My point is the two live well together. They want open source enables us to push further. What's that quote? Uh, I always butcher it, but Isaac Newton, something of like standing on the shoulders of giants. How do we ever move forward if we're always reinventing the past? So those core infrastructure pieces are needed to be shared so that we can all build bigger ideas with them. And um, that all sells well, sounds well and good philosophically or whatever. And I guess I've gone on a little too long here, but I'll end with like, look at Microsoft, for example. Uh, very, very loving and adapting of the open source world. Remember they bought GitHub a couple years ago and I remember even personally being like, well, it's the end of GitHub and it's the exact opposite. The website's only gotten better. The more features in, they got rid of they got rid of the paid private accounts. Like all the things that you assumed they were going to do to gut it and close it off, they did the opposite. 
look at them with WSL putting the Windows subsystem Linux in there and, and uh, it, it, and they're embracing this because they understand that idea of like, oh, all well, this stuff's infrastructure. We can put our stuff on top. So I'm going to end this with open source is amazing. We wouldn't be where we're at without it. Um, and it wouldn't allow us to keep building new things. That doesn't mean closed source and proprietary is going away. It just means the two will always live in a good marriage. And we, as a company that provides open source storage solutions, feel that we are a key component in providing the storage infrastructure to people at a fair price so that they can build there big ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's all I have to say about that. That's a lot of, that's perfect. <laughs> that's why we brought you probably, up here. Probably more than you wanted. Well, no, no, that's perfect because that's why we brought you up here because you've been in this world for a lot longer than most of us and we knew that you'd have a good insight on. So thank you for coming up here and, and saying those words. I mean, you couldn't have said it any better myself. So Thanks, Chris. Cool. Hey, there you go. Anyway, listen, that's it. We've talked a lot about open source today, uh, a lot about our philosophy and, you know, the kind of the history of open, open source. Got Brett's insight too. So. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, uh, always, you know, we'd love to see your comments down below. Uh, and even, you know, why not email us, info45drives.com. Why know? not? Yeah, why not? Why uh, not? There's always someone here to answer your well, questions, yeah. so exactly. So anyway, thanks again for popping on, uh, giving us your two cents. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see you guys again soon.